and be very intentional too. You know what I'm saying? Because even working at T-Mobile, everybody has a phone. That's right. Your phone is important. So you don't know who you're going to meet while helping somebody with a phone. That's crazy. So um, it was this uh, lady, she came in and uh, man, I was just telling her about my journey. Yo, I just moved here fresh from New Orleans. Yada, yada, yada. I'm a songwriter. Man, I'm just trying to yeah, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get, you know what I'm saying, get in. And then the right. whole time, I don't even know who I'm talking to. Uh, I don't even know who she is. Yeah. And, uh, man, she, I told her I'm a songwriter. She was like, yo, send me some records. Send her some songs. So 30 minutes later, after I finished helping her with us, uh, phone, she leaves the store. Yo, call me. Yo, my cousin Tamar want this record. And, my, and it was her and this guy named Picasso. Wow. Got the record to Tamar, but all, that all happened while I'm at work. We talking Tamar Braxton. Tamar Braxton. You at T-Mobile. You just sold, I don't know, was it an iPhone? It was an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, an iPhone 4, iPhone yeah. 5. And you just talking to someone random yeah. about your journey, about yeah. what you're doing. And she says, send me a record. And her cousin is Tamar Braxton. Tamar Braxton. Braxton. That is crazy. And then, my, her, and then connected to my boy Picasso, they got it to, them two got it to her. That's crazy. Yeah. And you got it placed. Placed. That's crazy, bro. Can we talk? Oh, can we talk? Can we talk? R&B. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy. It's Ian Vaughn. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Can We Talk R&B podcast. And listen, I got one of them ones with me today. Look, we in ATL, but this is one of my homies. And I'm saying my homies because, you know, as you guys know, I'm from Louisiana born and raised in Baton Rouge, but I do reside in New Orleans. And uh, my guy I got with me is a young living legend from New Orleans, young V Script. This is a singer, songwriter, producer, A&R, just all around magical dude in the industry that's pushing the needle forward with a lot of our up and coming superstars, Eric Bellinger, Danny Lay, Coco Jones, and the list goes on. Big shout out, man. Thank you for joining us today. Man, what's up, man? Thank you for having me. My man. guy, what's up with you? Man, all good, man. Everything all good. God is good. Man. Absolutely. All the time. All the time. Look, man, we just, I'm excited to have you here. We just, you know, this is what we're doing. Can we have a conversation about R&B? Yes, man. Can we talk R&B? Man, let's talk R&B. This is what we do. Believe so, V script. So you've, you know, not, ju- not to just dial all the way in right, right away, but you have been working with some of the most influential up and coming younger artists uh-huh. in the game for the last so many years. And I'm saying up and coming. I mean, EB, which he gets a shout on every episode, Eric Bellinger is not a EB. new and up and coming artist. This guy is like a, a legend as an independent artist, but as a songwriter, producer, like he's just official, official. You've been working with him for some time. Yeah. Uh, you've been working with Coco Jones. She's fantastic. Like, take me back to what got you started in music, your passion for R&B music. Like, how'd you get to, where, you know, get to that point? Uh, man, so uh, I would say everything for me started through dancing. Mm. Uh, I was a dancer first. I, you know, I wanted to be a choreographer, so I was into like the, all the eight counts and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. music has uh, always been a part of you know just who I am. Yeah. Uh, my rhythm before I even knew that I was gonna do music. Yeah. I thought I was. I, it was dancing. So you know, dancing and music is connected. It's like sure. husband and wife. Absolutely. Uh, so that's why I first started. But in the midst of that, I used to always dissect R and B. I used to always sit down by the radio with my dad and listen to uh, R and B records. Yeah. And my dad was a—he was a vinyl collector, so he mm. used to have all the classics. Like every Sunday, it was his ritual playing the Osley Brothers. Come on. Uh, playing, you know, Rick James. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Marvin Gaye, Stevie yeah. Wonder. So yeah. he had a—he got a big giant collection. So nice. every Sunday, he would just educate me on who was who and what they did and how they started and stuff like that. So that's kind of like what Daddy my love. Daddy raised you right. That's where my love came from for, you know, through him. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that's like, obviously, I mean, you naming some of the iconic goats, you know, Stevie Wonder, Marvin, uh, you know, these guys are some of my foundational pieces as well. Yeah. Like, what about, I mean, obviously the music is fantastic from them, but what about that music helped you become I mean, obviously as a dancer, but what helps you become who you are? Yeah, so you know, so it it it, it those those uh, records and stuff. There was moments, so mm-hmm. you remember these things. You remember where you was when you heard this record, and uh, what you was going through at the time when you heard this record. Yeah. So I always relate records to moments that 
in pivotal moments of our life, and especially sure. in our prom, like in our teens, yeah. going to our early 20s, mm -hmm. and those are our most like... It's like a time capsule. That's a time capsule, yeah. yeah. You know, so you remember what, what, where you was when this came on, what you was going through when this song came out, that's right. who you was dancing with, what girl you was dating, that's right. who broke your heart. Yeah. It's just all those things all yeah. into one. Absolutely. You know, so that's how I kind of like, you know, got closer to it. Like, sure. through that, and then... From now, I used to do poetry. Mm. I used to go around in New Orleans and hit up the different poetry spots uh, and stuff like that. Go do the open nights and yeah, yeah. recite poetry. But I always always had a rhythm mm. to the way I wrote my poetry. Sure. And like some people, when they just read off the paper, That's right. I used to always have like a, a cadence. Like, yada, 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 like yeah, yada, yeah. yada, yada. And then it was just like one day, uh, it was after Hurricane Katrina. Mm hmm I was I started working at Lakeside Mall okay. in, New, in yeah. uh, New Orleans. Oh, veterans. In Metairie. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly that. So one of my best friends to this day, I call him Big Earl. Uh -huh. He, uh, I used to carry around my journal yeah. with my poems in it. Uh -huh. So he heard one of my poems. He was like, yo, bro, I think you're a songwriter. Mm. Because it got, it got rhythm to it. And then I visually see everything that you're saying. Yeah. So one day, uh, he was at work. He was helping a customer. And he called me, he said, yo, Harrison, come over here. Come, I need you to meet somebody. Mm. And it was Diesel Harrison. Mm. So for people who don't know Diesel Harrison, he did Lollipop for Lil Wayne. That's right. Mrs. Officer for Super Lil producer. Wayne. Super producer. And then that was the beginning of that. He, entered, he invited me over to his studio. Mm. And then he heard my poems. And he was like, yo, stop writing poems. You're a songwriter. Wow. Let me teach you how to master your melody. Wow. And then that was the beginning for me as a what, songwriter. What year is this? This is 2007. 2007. 2007, going into 2008. Gotcha, gotcha. So now you're kind of getting in your bag. So you're, you're obviously you're already influenced by the music. You're already writing. So what, from, from the introduction to Diesel and him kind of, you know, giving you, the, putting the battery in your back, man, you're a songwriter. Mm -hmm. What was like the first song that made you feel like, okay, I'm like, I'm in this space. I'm doing this and I'm comfortable in this space. It was uh, Nobody by Rance Davis. Okay. Uh, he was like, I remember Rance from, from yeah. New Orleans, yeah. And a lot, Rance is my first cousin. Nice. So Rance's mom and my mom are sisters. Okay. So um, it was when we, we finally, we, we, did, we had signed to this independent label called Extreme. Okay. Uh, people in, in New Orleans, you know, uh -huh. um, they had Baby Boy and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a successful independent label that was in New Orleans. Sure. So we wound up doing a, a situation with them, and then the first record that came to life was this record called uh, Nobody. Okay. And it became like number one in the city. Nice. It was the he was he became like one of the first R and B artists to get actually at that time get power rotation in the radio. That's hard to do in the world. It was hard. Yeah. Yeah, and especially with it not having a bounce beat behind it. Uh huh. You know, exactly. having doing like uh, traditional R and B. Of course. Um. So yeah, that was the beginning. That was the first song that I saw that went. That went. That yeah. was making some noise. That was making some noise. I remember Ranch. I remember that that run um, being from the area, and um, I remember when I was making music. Well, I, when I was making music at that time, I was also making music, and um, I remember hearing this little resurgence of this of this guy, this young guy. People yeah. were like Ranch Davis. You heard any Ranch Davis? Yeah. I don't believe I did any any dates with him or nothing like that. But I remember hearing the music and, and being like, man, this dude was pretty dope. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So from there, like now, I mean, you I, he had a run. I remember yeah. this. Maybe a year or two yeah, in the city. Yep. Um, and you, as a writer, you're starting to capitalize and go to a further level. Yeah. So, so take, take me there. So funny you ask that. So like from that perspective, so my so my introduction into the into the music was mm -hmm. through an artist. Right. Okay. So I never had that. I, I didn't start. My career didn't start off. As placing records. Oh, placing oh record. gotcha. Placing, placing gotcha. records. So I didn't understand what placing records was until I moved to Atlanta. Mm. So that's when I, because like when you're in New Orleans, you only see it one way. That's we right. The industry is not there. We the don't have A&Rs there. Right. That's right. We don't have big time studios where you go meet this A&R who's working on this project that's and that right. project. So that whole side was new to me. Sure. Right. So then after Rance had his two year run and the, and the two records I did for him did well, they mm -hmm. charted on uh billboards mm -hmm. at the time so it was a record nobody and old thing back so okay. then we decided to move mm -hmm. we decided to move to it's Atlanta a must. to a bigger market it's a must at least at that time at you that had time. to now, yeah, you, had to. now yeah. you don't necessarily have to move right but back in those days I mean yeah. shout out to a couple of my, shout out to my homeboy uh, Jordan Armstrong yeah at the crib he was blowing up and I remember saying bro y'all like 
y'all making some noise, you need to move to Atlanta. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, move somewhere. Like, move to where the industry yeah. is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, we moved to Atlanta, and then now, I'm in Atlanta, right? And so, that's when I started understanding, okay, now, there's more than one way to get it. You can get it through an artist, mm -hmm. work through working with an artist, get your songs out. Now, I meet A&Rs. Now, I meet producers that need records. Mm -hmm. So, this was the difference. So, now, I'm, I'm, at this time, I was working at T-Mobile, so I transferred with my job to T -Mo from T -Mo uh, yeah. New Orleans to Atlanta with T-Mobile. And then, man, the story about even how I got my first placement, I was at, I was at work. Look, that's a nugget right there. First of all, <laughs> look, young folks, keep your job, bro. Like, you working for wherever you're working, if it's a decent job. And I, I, I used to work at T-Mobile, too. Yeah. So I, I, that was, you know, they paid you some decent money. Yeah. You, can, you can do your thing. Yeah. And you can still pursue your career. Yeah. Keep your job until you really get to the level, right? right? You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of these young guys, they're yeah. just like, I'm just, I'm going to get it out the mud, and that's good, yeah. but, you know, don't struggle while you're doing it. And be very intentional, too, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Because even working at T-Mobile, everybody has a phone. That's right. Your phone is important, so you're going right. to know who you're going to meet while helping somebody with a phone. That's crazy. So, um, it was this uh, lady, she came in, and, uh, man... I was just telling her about my journey. Yo, I just moved here fresh from New Orleans. Yada, yeah. yada, yada. I'm a songwriter. Man, I'm just trying to, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Trying to get, you know what I'm saying, get in. That's and then right. the whole time, I don't even know who I'm talking to. Uh, I don't even know who she is. Yeah. And, uh, man, she, I told her I'm a songwriter. She was like, yo, send me some records. Send her some songs. So 30 minutes later, after I finished helping her with us, uh, phone, she leaves the store. Yo, call me. Yo, my cousin Tamar want this record. And, my, and it was her and this guy named Picasso. Wow. Got the record of Tamar, but all, that all happened while I'm at work. We talking Tamar Braxton. Tamar Braxton. You at T-Mobile, you just sold, I don't know, was it an iPhone? It was an iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> just back then, an iPhone 4, iPhone yeah. 5, and you just talking to someone random yeah. about your journey, about yeah. what you're doing. And she said, send me a record, and her cousin is Tamar Braxton. Tamar Braxton. That is crazy. And then, her, and then connected to my boy Picasso, they got it to... Them two got it to her. That's crazy. Yeah. And you got it placed. Placed. That's crazy, bro. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I so love to hear stories like that. So that's 2012. Nice. The record yeah. comes up. You know, so I moved, well, I moved, no, I moved up there 2012, mm -hmm. but I meet them like 2014. So I get, I get my first major artist placements 2015. That's crazy. So Shout that's out to happened. Tamar Braxton because yeah. she's one of the, she's actually one of the most elite vocalists. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? She don't really get that. Yeah that acclaim as she should in my opinion i mean we all love tony and tony is definitely one of my all-time all-time favorites but tamar got them vocals too yeah for real oh, yeah you know we, we want to hear more from you tamar we want to yeah. hear more music from tamar, you. tamar different for she sure. really is for sure man yeah. that's fantastic so i love hearing stories like that as a songwriter i've never i mean like i've had a lot of luck and a lot of good things happen for me yeah. but i've never had something like that happen so when i hear it it's exciting to see yeah. and hear and um you know, it's, it's, it's inspirational. Cause yeah. It's like you always, you, you're wearing your, you're wearing your talent, your gifting, your purpose yeah. out, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. You're still representing that. And then, and then God's able to yeah. return Cause, that you for know, you. Cause all God always say like, listen, I'm gonna give you the gift, but you just got to do the work. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean the work stop because you have the gift. Absolutely. You got to make room for the gift. For sure. Uh, so I just feel like, you know, uh, that's how this journey has been for yeah. me. Just do it, continue, you know, staying consistent, doing the work, that's putting right. family first, putting God first. That's right. And then he got the rest. Bless, bless. Yeah. So after Tamar, I mean, obviously, you got a place for that album. I think I know that album did pretty well. That was yeah. Uh, that was the Calling All Lovers album. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think another one of my partners got a place for that album too. Uh, Muhammad Ayers, I believe. Yeah. Um, but so what that first check looked like? Oh man. It was, it was, it was, it was good. Yeah, yeah. It, it was yeah, good, man. Yeah, yeah. Did it make you quit T-Mobile is the question. No. <laughs> no. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You got to make nah. sure that consistent check is coming. Consistent, yeah. All I'm doing and, is dropping these nuggets for yeah, these guys. Okay. Yeah. And around that time, you got to think about it, too, it was a different time. Yeah. That's when you're in the streaming era. That's true. You know, so it, it was different from back then. You know, yeah, yeah. you had writers that got big checks off of album cuts. That's right. Because physical copies were still sold and stuff 100%. like that. So it's two different, yo, it's two different worlds. Now. <laughs> totally different world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but that, that, 
the way I looked at that situation, I made it to the basketball team. Yeah. I made it to the NBA. Gotcha. Gotcha. Got That's how I look at that placement. You, you got drafted. You're in the league. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of securing your spot. Securing your spot. Yeah, and becoming a starter or whatever. Yeah. So from that album, take me, take me on from there. You went from Tamar to who? So from that album, went, I went from Tamar um, to, to uh, I was, uh, who came after Tamar? Um, after, after the Tamar placement, I went from Tamar, then getting to Eric Bellager, getting yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, Eric was like a big, was like a, well, hold on, let me rewind that. Went from Tamar, then I had did this, did this record, I did this record, it never came out. Okay. But um, I did this record, and somehow it got to Mike Karen. Nice. Okay. All right. And so Mike wanted this record, uh, and at the time it was going to be for Kalani. Mm. It was supposed to be the record that crossed Kalani over. That's yeah. like, like when he found the record, and he couldn't find. He didn't. When he had the demo yeah. for three months mm. in his uh, in APG yeah. in his office, yeah. and um, I had did the song for this group. And when I did the song, their manager didn't tell me that Mike was looking for me. Mm. Right. So then Mike called everybody in Atlanta to see who he knew. That, that uh, knew who you were. Knew who you were, and that's how we got connected. Nice. And so that was like the next thing, and then um, that was that was huge. He was like, "Yo, when I when I sat down, he was like, "Yo, this has been the number one uh, demo record in the building for the past three months, and wow. we didn't know who you were. You know, wow. what I'm saying I was looking for you to, to figure out who you were. Wow. And then the record was supposed to come out on Kalani, but. At the time, she had wound up getting pregnant, so mm. the, the record didn't come out. Didn't come out. I mean, one thing about records, though, when they don't come out, you yeah. can always use them. You can always use them. You know, if you need to tweak something production-wise yeah. or whatever from the sonic, yeah. from a sonic standpoint, but yeah. So, yeah. so that that uh, so when that happened, I, I was able to fly out to LA, mm -hmm. and then, man, it was like uh, before. I always look at this because I always see things from a spiritual perspective too. Yeah. So one of my good friends, Robin, Robin K, she's from New Orleans. So okay. She was like, yo, before I did this trip, she was like, I need you to pay attention to the letter D. Mm. And I was like, what you mean? She said, listen, just trust me. I know it sounds crazy, but pay attention to the letter D. That's all I, that's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. So boom, I get to LA, have my meeting with Mike Karen, walk out to meet with Mike Karen, my phone rang. And it was one of my good friends, Sean Hamilton. I ain't talked to him in like three years, mm. but he saw that I was in LA. He was mm. like, yo, come meet me in Calabasas. Mm. So I tried to Calabasas, Dark Child. Wow. Wow. Rodney Jerkins. Rodney Jerkins. One of the goats. One of the goats. And wow. She just told me, let it D. Dark Child. Dark Child. So how did that. So how did he find you? Like how 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 he so he saw you know happened? Instagram. Of he course. saw he saw it, my story. Okay. And he reached out. Yo, you in L.A. Uh, my my boy Sean. Yeah, yeah. Come pull up. And at the time he was working with Rodney. Gotcha. Uh, so I pulled up on him at Cal at Calabas in Calabasas. And then he introduced me to Dark Child. Then that was that was the beginning. Man. That was the beginning of me and Rodney's relationship. And uh, that's that was that was like a pivotal moment. For of course, me, of you know course. What, what year is this? This is twenty eighteen. Uh, wow. Yeah, Rodney is just that. Like, one, Rodney's one of those guys. Again, I've, I've actually we met once at like a Stellar Awards, yeah, like a Gospel Awards show years ago. But I've met his brother Fred a number of times. Yeah. Um, years, years back, rest in peace. I met Lashawn. Yeah. Um, and one of my good friends is he used to be one of the producers with Dark Child uh, named Chip Dixon. Yeah. Um, which is one of my, my close, close friends. He's produced some stuff for me um, over the years, a lot, a lot of stuff for me over the years. And I've never had the opportunity to work with Rodney. So, like, right. to hear that, and I, just, I mean, I'm a big fan of his music and big fan of what he's contributed to the game. So to have a direct connection to that, to get that call, yeah. like, what was that feeling like? Oh, man, it was, it was amazing. It, it, you know, it was amazing and, you know, unreal. You of know course. what I'm saying? Being from New Orleans. And, That's right. You know, you know where we from. And, yeah. Making it to there, it was like, yo, this is one of my, this is one of the, my idols. This yeah. is one of the people that I admire. Yeah. You know, and then, um, man, that's when I, you know, sitting down with him and just talking to him. And that's when I just realized, yo, he's a real person. Yeah. I, I don't consider him an industry person. Right, right. He's a real person. Yeah. And, uh, man, he saw so much in me mm -hmm. beyond writing. Sure. 
So that's why, you know, we, cause we have a lot of family values, like we value the same stuff. So yeah. that's why that relationship became uh, bigger than music. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So from, is, 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 I mean, did you sign with Rodney? Did you? So, so from there, you know, I was still at T-Mobile uh -huh. and Rodney gave me my opportunity to go full time in, into my dream. Nice. Uh, he, he signed me as a writer and then he started grooming me as as an A and R, and then nice. I became his A and R, awesome. writer, A and R, bringing in projects, helping out with projects, uh, and then he just trusts me. He always trusts my ear. That's fantastic. So is that how you got to her? Yeah, through Rodney. Through Rodney. Yeah. So that brings me to like I love that record. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a big, big, big her fan. Yeah. Uh, we definitely would love her. Gabby, we want to get you on the yeah. Can We Talk R&B podcast. You, you just, she's one of those, you know, generational artists. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, to me, I'm a big, big fan of. Um, so that song that you did with her, uh, you produced, was that Exhausted? Yeah, we co-produced it on it. Nice. Yeah, Exhausted, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So from there, like, take me to, okay, so now you, you're in the building. Now yeah. you, 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 you're, with, you're with Dark Child, you're on the team, you're now fully, fully engaged, who, like, at this point, I mean, obviously, you've just been continuously climbing and continuously yeah. going, you get to Chris Brown, like, how, how that transition happened at this point, is it, did you get a publishing deal? Did yeah, so, so, publishing deal, so, I wound up doing a publishing deal with Rodney, uh -huh. so, in the midst of my publishing deal, our relationship grew, yeah. became, became his A&R, yeah. uh, then the next puzzle uh, piece to me was Eric Bellinger. When I met Eric, that was became another valuable mm -hmm. relationship yeah. that became bigger than music. For sure. And so uh, me and Eric connected day one, same thing, see the same thing, see the industry the same way, uh, see music the same way, view it the same way. Um, so that was like another uh, valuable piece to me. Yeah. And so when we, uh, when we locked in, we locked in. You know, um, just from you know, from a musical and sonic, uh, sonically perspective. So that relationship grew, and then creating records, and then we wound up me, him, and my team. Uh, we did the the uh, Chris Brown record, yeah. Cab. Yeah. So we wound up co-writing that, mm -hmm. and then uh, but before that happened, that happened at a camp. Uh, we went to a writing camp, mm -hmm. and we was just doing songs because I was I was. Uh, Curating writing camps for Eric's album New Light, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, which is his Grammy no nominated. His Grammy project. nominated. Album. Okay, yeah. yeah, but New Light. So, okay. So we started that. It was crazy. So we started. He came down to Atlanta. Uh, we rented out a house. Yeah. Slim from One Twelve came through. Nice. Uh, so all these records. This was like what two years ago nice. in the process, but the rec the album came out like a year later after gotcha. we did all it. Sure. So um, we rented a house. I invited a whole bunch of creatives that I believed in yeah. to the facility. Yeah. And then uh, we started working on Eric album. Nice. And man, I'm telling you, we was turning out songs like Slim from 112 was in there. Wow. He was just looking at it like, yo, this is a factory. Yeah. Because we was knocking out 10 songs a day. That's crazy. You know, for the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. working towards the project. Then the songs that we had left over, uh -huh. we shopped them for of placements. Of course. And, and uh, then we wound up doing the cab record with yeah, uh, Chris. this other collective called the Safety Club. Mm. So it was me, Eric, super friends in Safety Club. We did the cab record together. So you and Eric are the super friends? So Eric is, uh, super friends is my collective. It's, yeah. it's, it's uh, songwriters and producers together. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, uh, we collab with this other producing team uh, co collective called Safety Club. Called Safety Club. So we did the production. Nice. And then me, Eric, uh, my guy B. Hess and Quintelli, we did the writing Fantastic. on it. Man, so y'all got man, y'all got a whole <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to come sit in on, yeah. one these, on one of these sessions, man, just yeah. to kind of just absorb the greatness yeah. that's going on. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it's just like so even for the new light, like even like for that project, like we sat down, we did vision boards, we talked about that. We was very intentional mm -hmm. uh, about that project and making sure we tie it to his reality. Yeah, and you know that, and the rest was history. So the man. album went on doing what it was doing. Absolutely, you know. That's fantastic. So that was the next step. So from Dark Child, meeting Eric. Yeah. That was two, like, two pieces for me. Man, your story is so inspiring. I'm listening. There's a lot of, I know there's a lot of young people going to be watching this that's pursuing music. And I know the game has changed so much over the past mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, of course, tw uh, and, uh, 20 years and, and so forth in terms of how we consume music. Yeah. Obviously, how we make a living making music. 
um, or put music out, what keeps you motivated? Oh, keep me motivated, man, is, is talent. Yeah. Talent and just... You know, life keep writing itself. Yeah. So we gotta keep we gotta keep making memories. We gotta we gotta uh and and paying it forward. Yeah. I believe in paying it forward. For sure. Because you know, Rodney did that for me. Mm -hmm. Turn around, even Eric. Eric did that for me. Mm -hmm. So it's my it's it, it, I always led with that mentality. Yeah. Because doors open doors. That's right. You know? Uh and I think um we gotta we gotta and then another thing is what I didn't have in the be in the beginning was the education. Uh, of how this how this works, how the game works. So that's why it's my duty with these young up and coming artists and the new talent to teach them the business, yeah. so they won't make decisions out of desperation. Right. You know, so they can make decisions and be okay. Because like when my when I got off of my first pub deal, T Mobile was my bank. That's but right. But that was a bank. That was a loan I didn't have to pay back. That's right. So when they kept coming to me with publishing deals for twenty five thousand, yeah. thirty thousand dollars, I'm making more than that at T Mobile. At T -Mobile so I wait till I catch the right record. Better tell them to get the to get the to get the right situation. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't desperate for it, mm -hmm. you know, because I knew God had me. That's right. You know, so um, that's how I look at it. That's why I tell any up and coming artist, any up and coming songwriter, any up and coming producer, like, listen, the music industry is great. We we value our gifts. But the music industry is not loyal, mm. you know. So you gotta Talk be loyal. You gotta be loyal to yourself to understand your value. And then once you walk into the situation, understanding your vi understanding your value, the doors open up for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's get into let's get into the deep dive. So it's a record that you did for Chris. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that record is Catch a Body. Mm -hmm. So that record, take me on. Like what? What inspired that record? Like, what were you thinking about? Like, what, what vibe was that? Man, we was, so we pulled up, shout out to the safety club. They had a big camp mm -hmm. that they did in uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Me, Eric, and my, uh, my artist, Quintelli, and my guy, B. Hess. Nice. Know, my producer, Bridges, we pulled up uh, to that session. And then, man, we was just having fun. Yeah. We wasn't even thinking, the, the chemistry with us is so, is so amazing. Mm -hmm. To where we don't even think about sometimes where the record's going. We don't put that pressure yeah. to think about, oh, we got to get this to Chris. We wasn't even thinking Chris when we wrote it. Mm. it the record found a home for itself. Nice. So that it was, but we had fun. Like it was, that record is a, a fun record. For sure. So that was the vibe at the time when we was creating that record. But what was, like, what was the motivation? You guys are creating, you like, okay, I want to, you know. Well, obviously, it found a home with, with Chris. Yeah. But, the, like, the motivation in terms the, of... The motivation in terms of when we heard the track, the track was up-tempo. Yeah. So, man, we was trying to do something saucy. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. was, that was the, you know, the, the music inspired us, inspired the melody that we put on it. Yeah. Uh, so, we was... Uh, we was we was already in the midst of it. We had a, you know we had shots going. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why we had iced out for the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shots got me feeling saucy tonight. Yeah, so you know yeah, we had yeah. all that stuff. So like all that stuff was like happening in real time, and we yeah, was yeah. wiping in it's real time. It's a real vibe. It's a real vibe. A it lot of times like I know time. some of the best songs are when they just you you just flowing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not like there's no pressure on it. You just having a good time. You having a good time. And a lot of those be the ones. Yeah. That's fantastic. So we were talking the other day, right? And we were talking about just the state of R&B music. We're starting to see a resurgence. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see a lot of new artists. Uh, big shout out to your boy Quintelli. You, you yeah. mentioned uh, him. And uh, I've, I've listened to some of his records, man. Dude is really with the smoke. I love, oh, yeah. what, I love what he's on. Oh, he got um, it. So we were talking about the state of it. And I see, the, I see what's happening. Like, what do you think is the next best thing for R&B. Because the, the, to me, the whole point, point of doing this show is not only to highlight the legends of the game, but it's mm -hmm. also to introduce new talent to the game. But ultimately, it's to get the audience or get the world to listen to R&B music again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, where, do, where are you on that? Like, I know you, you, as, a, as a contributor to the culture, what, what are your thoughts on the state of where things are now, uh, how things can be better? Okay. So I think... I think history always repeats itself. Yeah. I just think that the state that we're in right now, we're in the we're in a hip hop driven era. Right. Right. So we when we say pop pop music, right? Uh, I always I always think about time slots, like we was talking about the other day. Mm -hmm. Like we were saying, the seventies was disco and funk, and then after the seventies, there was the emergence of rock. Yeah. Rock had rock became the 
dominant genre. Uh-huh. Then after the after the eighties, we get into R and B bag. R and B soul. Yeah. So from nineties to from so from nineteen ninety to early two thousand, R and B had the longest run. Uh-huh. Right. So I think what we were saying, hip hop, hip hop was discovered what, what, 1979? Something like that. Something like 50, that. It's been 50, 50 years. years. It's the 50th right. anniversary. So you got to think about it. Every genre had its turn, mm-hmm. right? In in the pop as the number one genre, mm-hmm. because at one point in time, R and B was the number one genre mm-hmm. in the 90s. It dominated. Yeah. Look, if you go look at the charts at the time, Tony Braxton, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mary J. Blige, yeah. Tyrese, yeah. Genuine. Look at all these artists that I'm naming. That's, That's R&B, right. Jordan, right. Boys to Men. That's right. You know, uh, uh, um, Drew Hill, mm-hmm. uh, Jagged Edge. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's so many people. Yeah. Um, so hip hop has finally became, 2017, it became the number one genre. And that's a, like, and I, and I know that's that to be true. Yeah. But it seems to me like hip hop has been at the top, at the top, same, you know, for the past ten years it seems. Right. But you know, but, but, more, but you know. yeah, but in a state, so like I would say that that's what they first announced it as. Okay, it, had, it had it had surpassed. It eclipsed everything. It else. eclipsed everything. Yeah. So everything. So I'm just saying, I'm bringing it up to say is, it's timing. Mm-hmm. Everything has a time, and also too, you got to think about different things. I always say TV, mm-hmm. content, music, and movies, sh- TV shows, is husband and wife. Mm-hmm. It goes together like fashion. Mm-hmm. It, it dictates what we do. We inspired off of what we see. That's right. We write off of what we see. Mm-hmm. So when you get in the 90s and 2000s, early 2000s, family matters, living single, mm-hmm. a different world. Mm-hmm. Martin, 90s, yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Even going into your black cultural movies. You know what I'm saying? Best Man. Love Jones. Love Jones. Boomerang. Soul Food. Yeah. Boomerang. Roll Money. So look what we were seeing. And listen to the soundtracks to the, to the Listen movies. to the soundtrack. So, what we saw, like as a, as a creator, you create, sometimes you create off, you have, may have an idea that comes to you, but majority of the times you create off of situations you see. You create off of visuals you see. Art imitates life. Art imitates life. And so that's what dictated the sound of the music. Mm. Now you, you, you go into the era that we in, I want to say MTV Real World was the first. Mm. It was the first reality, reality show. show. And now let's talk about evolution. Housewives. Housewives. Love and hip hop. Yeah. As the world, as, as reality TV came, the world became more raw. Now listen to the music. So are you saying that reality TV, first of all, the reality TV surge happened significantly mm-hmm. during the time when there was a, a writer's strike. Artists, yeah. Remember the acting strike? The, the whole deal. Strike. Absolutely. And that's when they're like, well, we don't really have any content. Let's go with this, the, uh, the uh, reality TV. Re- are you saying reality TV has uh, systemically the, the messaging and the, the, I guess the lack of depth Death. That we that we get in reality TV has affected the culture the in terms of how we listen to music, consume, and Absolutely. I guess the, the actual feel. Yes, the next gener- the next generation watching that. That's right. Because we because remember that's not our gen. Mm-hmm. So we 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 grew up on. Think yeah. about the dominated writers. Think that's about right. the artists that we had. Think about the TV shows we had. Yeah, that's what we. It was merging. Yeah, it went hand in hand. So think about the artists now. Think about what's mm-hmm. on the radio now, and think about what you watch and what you see it on TV. It's not the first time I've actually heard that, and I'm like to hear, you know, or even consider that thought. Reality TV, in a lot of ways, not not as a general, generally, mm-hmm. but like some of the shows that we mentioned, were have had such a negative uh, impact across the board mm-hmm. on the society. Yeah. And it's not that they, that they exist; it's fine. Yeah. But it's more or less that that's what all was being right. cult, in the in pop culture. That's all right. was being driven in the culture. So right. the young women, the young guys, are seeing that and thinking, "That's what a relationship is." It, it control, thinking that's it, what it controls. That when you get home from TV, we had we had uh, we had one hundred and six in part. Yeah. When we was in school. Yeah. Coming home, we was looking forward to the BET Awards. It right. was built up before the R and B, you know, BET Awards to watch these certain things. Mm-hmm. So, what I'm saying that to say is, it's just an evolution. And then you got to think about too. Then hip hop also became melodic. Mm. 
you know that too yeah you know so so it's now it's like we in this era where imperfection is perfect mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like you can like if i go ask my um 19 year old niece yo what r&b you listening to it's gonna be confusing to her because she's gonna say future <laughs> don't you tell me that you're falling out of love with me mm -hmm. but when you but if you take the vocal off and you put Chris Brown, it's an R&B song. song. Uh. But uh, melodically and, and cadence-wise, that's an R&B record. Mm. It's just the vocal on it. Now we got used to. So we've muddied the hip-hop. and Hip-hop and R&B is as a one genre, essentially, yeah. has been muddied so much. Yeah. So mm. and, and so another thing that's going on is now that we tamper it, you know, now that, you know, a lot of the male, so rap has changed because it's not the same hip-hop that, it's not the same cadences mm -hmm. that, you know, Jay-Z and them was doing, right. Nas and them was doing, right. you know, uh, UG, uh, 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 UGK, Lil Wayne, UGK yeah, and them yeah, was yeah. doing. Right. So it's a different, so it's a different time. So like now, so as an R&B, male R&B artist, you got to compete with that mm. versus the female, the, even when you kind of turn around to female R&B, female R&B is still dominating they because sing Nicki Minaj is not singing. Yeah. Cardi B is not singing. Yeah. And if they need an R&B hook, they're going to pick up the phone and call someone for the hook. Mm. Versus on the male side, Young Thug could do his own hook. Yeah, yeah. If he calls an R&B artist, it's because he genuinely wants to. That's right. Yeah. But he's he's capable and melodic enough to do his own hook. Mm. So look at the airwaves. Turn on the radio, and this is exactly what you're hearing. It's so deep. Because I'm looking at that on so many different levels. Like, I know this to be true. But I also look at, and no, no diss to hip-hop, because I'm a huge, huge yeah, hip-hop fan. Yeah, love hip-hop. But I'm an even bigger R&B fan. Yeah. And when I think about that, R&B, you know, ultimately R&B was specifically like the pulse of a lot of different things. You, you mentioned TV shows, m movies. But when you listen to R&B music, R&B music is not specifically meant to be consumed uh, quickly. You know what I'm saying? R&B mm -hmm. music is meant to be set with. Yeah. It's meant to be... The you know the uh, to design the mood of the house like you, you you know or if you're cooking in the kitchen mm -hmm. your mom's in the, you wake up in the morning your mom's yeah. cooking she got some R and B music playing you know you don't really you know I couldn't imagine right. your mom waking right. up in the morning your mom's playing Future in the morning I you know I'm sure some right. people are doing that these days but how I grew up you know um, so I think about the tempo and I think about the mood of society. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the lack of R&B being in the forefront. I know a lot of fantastic R&B is still mm -hmm. being made. Yes. But because it's not in the forefront like it used to be, right. I believe that is affecting the culture in a way. Yeah, and I believe it's coming back. Sure. It, I, so, like, I always hear people say R&B like, never dies. I, I completely it's, agree. I think, I think we got to, we got to, I think that's what I love. I love having this conversation yeah. because you got to look at technology. Mm -hmm. Our business became technology driven, mm -hmm. right? So the way we could, so think about it. The way we used to consume music is different from the, the new generation where they consume music, yeah. right? So remember, we hear about an artist because radio was the first well, we place you go to. That's right. Radio control who you listen to. Right. What I do like about the era that we're in, we have a choice. Because mm. basically, radio would beat in your head who to listen to. Because I can right. go back to, you got like, I could go back to the even the R the dominance of R and B era, mm -hmm. right? You you had mainstream radio artists and then you had neo soul artists, right. right? They didn't get the same attention that that's right mainstream the, guys. Ma you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you flip flop that in today's time, someone like Daniel Caesar can have a career and have a successful career. Yeah. Versus, even though he don't make mainstream music. Yeah. But he can he can find his fan base and cater to it. Brent right. Fires yeah. found his fan base and cater to it. Frank yeah. Ocean found his fan base and cater to it. Versus mm -hmm. the time that we was in, when radio was when it was, it was radio driven, thing. it's you, whatever the labels put the bag behind. There you, there you go to to play. So it's kind of like checks and balances. But you know, but I mean, to to your point, but but a little devil's advocate, Erica Badu, Maxwell. D'Angelo, Music Soul Child, yeah. Indy Iree. There was a run, uh, uh, you know, uh, a neo soul yeah. surgence, yeah. Uh, which is even why the term was even co yeah. considered neo soul, new soul. Yeah. That was late 90s, yeah. 97, 98. And for about four or five years, that dominated, right. you know, R&B. But guess what? 
that came back. Lucky day. Yeah. Daniel Caesar. Mm-hmm. Her. Yeah. Ari Lennox. Yeah. Snow Allegra. Some of those artists I wouldn't consider to be neo soul. Yeah, well, I, but I, I, but I love the, everyone you I, yeah, name. I'm a big I look fan at it of. like I look at it like new age. It's the yeah, yeah. it's the evolution of it. I got you. It's the next it's the it's the next chapter yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, versus the you know some you know when you think of mainstream, Summer Walker, Kalani. Right. You think you know what I'm saying? I'm sure. comparing it to I got the, the times. Yeah, 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 for sure. But all of these are fantastic. All artists. these are fantastic artists. And uh, I mean for sure. So I do agree. R and B has did not die. Um, R and B, I do believe at one point was was having an identity crisis. Yeah. Um, yeah. Trying to figure out, um, and, and in a lot of cases, you still have some of these yeah. guys, that, like you mentioned, trying to compete with the rappers. Right. right. And I'm like, what's gonna separate you, man? To me, now, again, I don't, right. I'm not an expert. So, it's vocals, it's melody, right. it's musicianship, it's right. something like right. you know. And then going back to what you just said too, even for me being on the other side, being on a, on a songwriter side. Like looking, looking, looking at it from a different scope. Like sometimes, even when they got, they got a lot of younger artists that want to put out real R and B. But one thing Tank said, Tank had nailed this on the, uh, on in, in the interview that I saw him do, mm-hmm. when he was like, "If I put this record out, it's gonna start it down AC." He said that on Drink Champs. Go for it. I, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's another thing. Like, so it's like you. I it's, think he was referring to the Sam Smith "Stay with Me" record. Yeah, right. So it's like, so it's almost like I always look at it like a basketball analogy, right? Mm-hmm. We see Jason Williams coming and do a crossover. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. But Iverson do it. It's normal. Mm-hmm. You know. So the bandwidth. You know, one thing he said in that interview was the bandwidth, and which I think is true. So it's like now, R and B is also um, categorized. So mm-hmm. like, like. It's put on a certain bandwidth where it doesn't come on. You have to have a certain. Now it's tone driven. Mm-hmm. It's a tone driven era. Mm-hmm. So if you had a, if you have a tone like Jaheem and you have a tone like you know R. Kelly, mm-hmm. you know uh, any anybody with a heavy soulful tone is going to come Hamilton. on. Andy Hamilton. Then they're going to start you on AC. Mm-hmm. But then if you have a light tone, a airy tone, a, a univer a pop tone, then you have the better chance to crossing over. AC is a dull contemporary, in case y'all yes. don't know. So, um, but to your point, because now you have a choice, artists like that can find their audience. They can find the audience. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and like I said, it's going to come, I, I believe it's coming back. I believe. Big, look, I, big shout out to yeah. Jack Ross. Jack Ross. From Orlando. Like, dude, serious. Crazy. And he has one of those yeah. real husky, yeah. soulful, soulful voices. Soulful, Sam Cooke. Yeah. Vibe. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Jack, too. Crazy. Yeah. Shout one out to him. He's, I've heard. Man, he's dope. He, he, he's pretty serious. Um, so as a soulful, you know, I'm a soulful guy myself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Me, too. Yeah. So, but I love all different styles of yeah. R&B music and I'm influenced and try to pull from different pieces to to make that current sound. What do you feel like uh, in terms of what you're contributing to R&B is going to be the next wave uh, of, 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 you know, sonically of, of what you guys are uh, contributing? I think sonically we, we found a, a, a contributing to, I think we're more pocket driven now mm-hmm. versus like, I think if you look at the production and stuff like that, like, uh, back in the '90s, it was more in- instrumentation driven. Yeah. But I think now the way the evolution of it and where we at now, where everything is more pocket driven, mm-hmm. more cadence, more pocket cadence. So I think that's kind of like how you relate to uh, the new age R&B. Like even when you listen to some of it out now, like a lot of it is not long winded. Yeah. It's it's a little choppy. Mm-hmm. We're adding the coolness, but also keeping the right, keep giving people the nostalgia feel. Mm-hmm. Like I always like a rec- a great record to me. Like I feel like that's like a, a, a hybrid mm-hmm. is Scissor Snooze. Mm-hmm. That record feels like Osley Brothers. Mm-hmm. But the pocket that she has on it. I never even thought about that. That's how I, listen, to the, listen to the hook. Yeah. How the hook go on? That's, uh, is that a... That's how that's I'm on. Yeah. Na, 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 na. Nobody, nobody like you do when I'm with you. That's Rhino. Wow. I never, I mean, I love that record. Yeah. I never even put that. I mean, Ozzy's my, yeah. <laughs> Ozzy's, this is my guys. But that's yeah. si- the science of it, like yeah. the, 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 the ingredients to it. Yeah. She's taking nostalgia and making it cool. Yeah. 
that I think that's what that's 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 the that's the recipe. Yeah, scissors scissors that ticket right yeah, now. For paying sure. attention, like understanding, underst like understand. It's like, but you could tell she's a student of all eras. Yeah, for sure. So so understanding. Okay, I'm gonna do this for the old school, mm. but I'm gonna do this. This pop. I'm gonna put this pocket on this for the for the for the new school. So who is your favorite right now? You give me five artists that of this current generation of the new school uh, R and B guys. Like who who you got? Not just, I'm saying guys, female, male, females. Yeah. So I got Quintelli. He Shout one of my favorite. Yeah, he's he nice. He one of my favorite. I love, I love uh, uh, Upstairs. He's okay. an up and coming guy. Okay. Um, her. Of course. Of course. Uh, I love Summer. She killer. Scissor. Hmm. These artists, like, and. I gotta apologize to the to the, my audience, guys. We have not had any female artists on the show just mm -hmm. yet, but they coming, and I'm telling you, like some of my favorite favorite R&B music is from the females. I mean, I can Damn. name, I can give you a whole list of songs uh, of from different artists, from you know, from Brandy, to yeah. Monica, to SWV, to Mariah Carey, to you know, Tony Braxton. We mentioned a second ago. Yeah. I mean, I can just keep going. Of course, Jasmine Sullivan to me is my yeah, Jasmine crazy. She's just she's everything to me. Her, of course, I love Summer. I love SZA. Yeah. These artists, we're gonna have, we're gonna definitely be bringing yeah. them on the show. And, and Eric Bellinger. Oh, okay, you, you gotta know, bring Eric. You gotta bring Eric because like Eric too to me, I feel like um, he was independent. Like I feel like he even started a wave like the independent route. Yeah. Or he opened the door. For, to do it for real, for to real. do it for real, yeah. like the independent route. Absolutely, I feel like too. That's why, like, it's, it's so crazy because now when you fast forward time, he was doing that before it was the thing to do, right? And now it's like independent. It's like you know. And what's crazy is I've like I'm, in, I'm I've been independent forever, and made you know as an independent artist, that's a grind. And yeah. but Eric has been able to do that right. at this high at clip, high clip, yeah, and consistently. Yeah. I mean, and when he has like so many albums yeah. out, like and so many records yeah. I can pull from from dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big. That's big. So new artists that you're working with right now? Any new project that we can be looking forward to hearing from you? Definitely. I mean, I've been excited about. I mean, Quintelli. Quintelli yeah. is like he's up. He's been having the buzz up, up and rising. Yeah. Uh, his project is due out in September. So Excellent. like that's kind of like you know, um, that's why I've been. That's why my focus been uh, on new talent, mm -hmm. um, and 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 continue to contribute to the to the uh, the new generation. Absolutely. That's it. That's good. Okay, we're looking out, Quintelli. We're looking for you, bro. Yep. We're looking for you. That's yep. what's up. That's what's up. So again, all we want to do is introduce new artists, you know, give flowers to the legends, you know, have conversations with guys like yourself yeah. that's contributing to the culture and continuing to have these type of conversations about yeah. R&B music. Thank you for joining us you today, brother. Know. You already know, baby. All day long. Believe all that. day long. Look, can we continue to have this conversation? Can we talk R&B? I appreciate y'all. Have my man V-Script with me today. Bless up. Yes, sir.